Welcome to Red Short 2021. This Wednesday, we are showing an encore presentation from our Red Short Threat Brief Archive. In the Intel world, an analyst is expected to be brief, be right, and be gone. We hope our Red Short Briefs are just that, of interest and useful. Today's webinar will review the Palmer Worm APT group, and we will provide a link to a detailed report in your chat box. Active since 2013, the Palmer Worm group, also known as Black Tech, has been observed targeting companies in Japan, China, Taiwan, and the United States. As opposed to ransomware groups, these actors appear to be focused on committing espionage. The APT group has been seen using custom malware along with known exploits to target its victims. They have also used legitimate tools such as PuTTY and PSExec as part of their malicious operations. Notably, Black Tech uses stolen code signing certificates to sign payloads to appear more legitimate and evade detection. They have used this tactic in both current and previous campaigns. The most recent campaign has targeted media, finance, and electronic companies in Taiwan, a construction company in China, and an engineering company in Japan, along with many others. Many of the malicious samples observed in the group's most recent campaign are identified as plead malware. This malware is highly capable of quietly infiltrating a victim network and exfiltrating sensitive data, typically arriving as a link or attachment inside of a malicious spear phishing email, where we heard that before. Uh, plead is a remote controlled backdoor which has the ability to execute commands on the compromised host. Once the infection occurs, Pleed downloads uh, other ma malware modules to using RC4 encryption. It also has proxy capabilities to help hide its network activity. And Pleed uses HTTP to communicate with its command and controller C2 infrastructure. In their attacks, the group has used uh, stolen code signing certificates, like I mentioned before, to sign its payloads and to appear more legitimate. In some cases, the files were digitally signed using a valid D-Link Corporation code signing certificate. Uh, that exact same certificate had been used to sign non-malicious D-Link software. Therefore, the certificate was most likely stolen. In 2018, however, D-Link revoked one of the certificates being used. The group has continued to use certificates stolen from the D-Link Corporation and other companies even after those certificates have been revoked. The main objective of the, ma of the malware is to steal sensitive information, likely for government or industrial espionage purposes. This is made clear by its ability to steal sensitive credentials stored in the web browser or email client. And Plead has also been seen using Drigo, D-R-I-G-O, a document exfiltration tool to steal confidential documents and upload them to a Google Drive account. Uh, the ability of the malware to delete files makes digital forensics and incident response a little bit more difficult. Prior to 2020, Black Tech has also used Keyvars and TS Cookie malware as part of their campaigns. Keyvars, a key logging malware, also shared the ability to steal and exfiltrate sensitive user information. TS Cookie, which is often confused with Plead malware, can use both HTTP and HTTPS to communicate with uh, C2 or command and control infrastructure. Just like Plead, TS Cookie has the ability to execute shell commands and steal sensitive uh, credentials from the victim's web browser. It also uses RC4 to encrypt its communication channel. Black Tech's most recent campaign has made use of a combination of malware we just discussed, discussed and traditional methods such as spear phishing. They establish a C2 server by exploiting CVE 2017-7269, which leverages vulnerable Microsoft IIS uh, 6.0 web servers. A spear phishing email containing a malicious attachment or URL is then sent to a target. Plead installer files are disguised as documents using the left, or I'm sorry, the right to left override technique, which obfuscates the malware's file name. They are typically accompanied by decoy documents to, to help trick the users. And once the malware is active on the host, attackers have free reign to install other malicious modules, monitor network or host activity, and exfiltrate their stolen uh, sensitive data. It is unclear if attackers in this campaign are currently exfiltrating stolen data to Google Drive as seen in past campaigns, or maybe even another cloud provider. Due to the use of old exploits, attackers are targeting, um, they're pretty much stuck targeting unpatched IIS servers for their command and control infrastructure. However, with their, um, with new malware being created, we're unsure if they're um, attacking servers using another method at this time. Software updates will help prevent targets from being infected in many cases. However, the use of spear phishing means that they could potentially change the malware they're using to tailor their TTPs for a specific victim. 
Red Sky Alliance strongly advises that companies train all employees in every department, specifically those who have access to sensitive information on the prevention of spear phishing attacks. This is difficult to do at, sp at scale because spear phishing by definition is specific to each target, but we recommend providing a robust phishing prevention program for all employees. We also recommend monitoring the antivirus detection shown on the slide, and IOCs are available on the Red Sky Alliance reporting for use in customized blacklists. I want to thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions regarding today's uh, briefing, excuse me, the topics briefed today, please get in touch with Jay McKee at wapaclabs.com. And everyone, I hope you have a great week. Thank you.